But first, Chick-fil-A time. As they always say at Chick-fil-A, my pleasure. <laughs> You know, I'm not much of a Chick-fil-A snob. Not that I really felt the need to have to tell you that, but I sounded excited earlier when I was going to drive through, but it's mostly because I hadn't eaten all day. All I ate today, because I was by myself at the photo booth all day since like nine o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And I had a Snickers and uh, some Zaps potato chips, always good. And a couple graham crackers. And I had a bottle of water and like half of a bottle of Coke. So I haven't eaten or even drank, or I haven't drunk much today either. So the thought of anything, any kind of food was exciting, especially Chick-fil-A because it's good. I always get my nuggets. Usually what I get is the nuggets and the fries. Sometimes I get the mac and cheese there. So now I'm really sounding like a snob. I'm really not, just because I was mostly really hungry. But. This is definitely doing the trick. All right guys, well it's Saturday evening. I'm done with my second day of uh, photo booth madness and now it's time for some French Quarter madness. I promised you guys I'd walk around and show you some things and see what we can get into and all that. So, uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and see what kind of fun we can get into tonight. Let's go. Steamer New Orleans on January 10th, 1812. The steamer New Orleans, commanded by Nicholas Roosevelt, arrived on this spot. It was the first steamboat to successfully navigate the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Steamboats were a major factor in the growth of New Orleans as a world port. And a good old sugar kettle right there. Beautiful oak tree. I just want someone 
First sighted as Indian Portage to Lake Pontchartrain in Gulf in 1699 by Bienville and Iberville. Founded by Bienville in 1718, named by him in honor of Duke of New Orleans, region of France. Called the Crescent City because of location in Bend of the Mississippi. There it is, guys. The famous, world famous Cafe de Monde. Great coffee and great beignets. I did an event in here once, photo booth event, about a year ago, if even that. This is one of my favorite places in the French Quarter to eat. The pizza's excellent, burgers, sandwiches, all that stuff. But it's uh, really, really good. Basically, if you would see Cafe Du Monde, which is straight back that way, and you walk, you keep it, you know, you pass it up and you walk back about a quarter mile, if that, it might not even be that far back. You'll see uh, Turtle Bay right here on the left. And Coops, which is right over here, is another excellent place. It's a few doors down. Coops right here. Excellent food, excellent seafood. I mean, not uh, seafood, excellent gumbo and stuff like that. You love it. ghost tour going on right there. Now I've been on a ghost tour here in New Orleans uh, 
there's not really any tour that you would call or could call the ghost tour because there's apparently, you know, a ghost in every building in New Orleans, according to the locals, basically. But it's still interesting, though. Right here in Jackson Square, right in front of St. Louis Cathedral. But man, I want to look at this building right here. Look how nice. It says Louisiana State Museum on it. I don't know if it's a museum or not, or if this is what it used to be or what, but that's a beautiful building. Anyway, this beautiful thing here is St. Louis Cathedral, which is obviously, if you ever watch anything, any video footage or anything from New Orleans, they always show this place, but it's absolutely gorgeous and the history of it is just deep. It's absolutely beautiful. And of course, that's the Cabildo building to the left of it, which I believe, if my history is right, I think that it served as a state capitol building, I believe, uh, when the state capitol was briefly in New Orleans. I could be wrong about that, but I seem to remember that. And I can't get into church right now. Maybe I don't know if it's closed because it's uh, like, you know, about 8 o'clock at night. But um, I would love to show that the inside of that and give you guys a full tour of this building one day. Which will happen for sure. I, say, I don't mean to say it like it might happen. It definitely will happen. I just have to find a time that I'm here when it's open. So we're coming up on Royal Street again. 
And I'm gonna do you guys one better and go one more block up to Bourbon Street. Just for you guys. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. It's for your own good. By the sights and sounds, I know I'm getting close to Bourbon Street, no doubt about it. Here we go, diving right in.
So did you like that? Did you like what you saw? I told you guys. I told you. It smelled vomity. It smelled like urine. There were one or two possibly dead people on the street passed out that I didn't feel the need to put on the channel. So I saved you guys with that one, but it was pretty terrible. But it's for your own good. But I can't say I didn't warn you though. It's a spooky place and it stinks. All I can say is there's no heaven on Bourbon Street. Only the other one. But I did that for you guys, for your own good, for your own sake. It was rough, but we did it together. And I hope you guys say your prayers tonight before you go to bed after seeing that. But uh, we're going to move on. Let's go to Canal Street. It's a little bit cleaner. Not by much, but it's cleaner. movie theater. How about that? Vitascope Hall, 623 Canal Street. On July 26, 1896, William T. Pop, Rock, and Walter J. Wainwright, shown with two patrons and projectionist William Reed, right to left, opened the first indoor seated movie theater in the United States. How about that? And it looks like This right here has to be, yep, 623. 623, yep, that's it right there. Vitascope. You can see right there. Wow. The first indoor seated movie theater in the United States. Wow. those ceilings. I wonder if those are original. Cool looking place. Man, this is a thing that that... Man, this is the first indoor seated movie theater in the United States. 
I just can't get over that. That's crazy. I didn't even know that was even here. Yeah, this is Canal Street, basically like the Vegas Strip of New Orleans. <laughs> Not quite as vomity and urine-y as Bourbon Street, but uh, it's not far from it. It's more spread out, that's all. Well guys, I think that's the end of my Saturday portion of the vlog, day two of three. Now tomorrow, uh, I gotta go back to the event to work another eight hours for the third and last day of the Essence Festival. But after that, I'll probably just be heading straight home. Although I don't know, I, just play, I have to play by ear because I don't have to work Monday or Tuesday, so I still have another three days off. But, I'm gonna be whooped, I'm already whooped. I'm exhausted now. The, the walking around and all that's keeping me awake, but it's hot and muggy. Like 185 degrees outside, Fahrenheit. And uh, I'm just ready to get back to the room, take a shower and relax, watch some YouTube. And that's about it. Hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I don't know what or if I'm gonna even vlog anything tomorrow. If anything, I might just close the whole vlog out tomorrow, like when I'm done with everything and heading home or something. I don't know, we'll just play it by ear. But either way, hope you're enjoying it. I'm gonna go hop back in my truck before my time expires on my parking permit time or whatever you call it. And uh, hope you enjoyed that little stroll around French Quarter, New Orleans and everything. And with that, Good night and see you in the morning. Till next time, which will probably be tomorrow. <laughs>